Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about how to actually solve some differential equations using the method of separation of variables. So let's start off with the definition. So whenever a first order differential equation can be expressed in this special form, where we have the derivative uh, dy over dx or y prime is equal to some function of x times some function of y, we call it a separable differential equation. So this only applies to first order differential equations where we can isolate the derivative like y prime on one side and then the other side of our differential equation we can factor as a function of purely x multiplied by a function of purely y. This special form allows us to separate the variables in our equation. We can move all the quantities involving y and the differential of y on one side of our equation and all the quantities involving x and the differential of x on the other side of our equation. We can then differentiate each side with respect to y and x, and from there, work towards finding the general solution to our differential equation. And so some examples of some differential equations that are separable differential equations would be like dy over dx is equal to x squared over y, or y squared. The idea is we could factor the right hand side as x squared times one over y squared. And now we have that form required for our separation of variables method. I think actually taking the time to write it in terms of this general form like f of x times g of x is maybe a little bit overcomplicating the process. The idea is can we move everything with y over to one side of our equation and everything with x over to the other side of our equation all while having these pieces multiplied by the appropriate differential dy for the y pieces and dx for the x pieces that allow us to eventually rewrite the differential equation in a form like this where we can then integrate both sides of our equation. And so this might not always be a very straightforward thing to do. Here's another example of a separable differential equation in the form it is currently written. It is looking like dy over dx or y prime is equal to the quantity x times y plus 1 plus x plus y. And we have to be a little bit careful before we claim that this equation is not a separable equation because the way it is written, it doesn't look like we can easily move all the x pieces to one side and all the y pieces to the other side. The way it is currently written, we cannot separate all the pieces of our equation, the pieces involving y and the pieces involving x to each side without some cross contamination going on. But if we rewrite our equation first, or at least the right hand side, we can actually see that we will be able to do this. And so if we actually factor the right hand side of our differential equation, we can determine that it can be factored as the quantity x plus 1 times the quantity y plus 1. And now we have it in this nicer form to, that makes it easier to see it really is a separable differential equation, right? Our function f of x would be x plus 1, and our function g of y would be the quantity y plus 1. So these two examples are both separable differential equations, which we could solve using our integration or antiderivative approach here. And so we've seen a couple examples of separable differential equations, but let's also point out some non-separable differential equations or maybe inseparable differential equations. And so if our first order differential equation looked like dy over dx is equal to like cosine of x times y or something like that, then there's no way that we could factor the right hand side as a function of x times some other function of y and then move these pieces around the way we need to. So this is not a separable differential equation. So our method of separation of variables will not work in solving a differential equation like this. We'd have to resort to some other method that we will not cover in this class. So in this example, we want to find the general solution to the first order differential equation. y prime is equal to x squared over y squared. And once we have the general solution, we want to use that to solve the initial value problem where we know the initial condition is y of 0 is equal to 2. And we're going to be able to use the method of separation of variables to help us solve this differential equation. And as a little reminder, in order to use this method, we want to write our first derivative as some function of x times some function of y. Then we'll be able to use this special form to rewrite our equation with those variables separated and then we can integrate and go from there. So at the moment, our equation, if we switch over to Leibniz notation instead of that prime notation, which I always recommend for the separation of variables approach is, well, we can write it as dy over dx is equal to one over y squared times x squared. And so now what we need to do is 
move these quantities around so that everything with a y or a differential of y is on the left hand side and everything else involving an x or a differential of x is on the right hand side. So we're going to have to multiply both sides by y squared as well as multiply both sides by the differential of x to achieve this. And so by multiplying both sides by y squared as well as the differential of x, we clear out the denominator on the left hand side and we introduce a factor of y squared to the left hand side. So now our left hand side is y squared times dy. And then on the right hand side, multiplying by y squared clears out that 1 over y squared quantity. So we have x squared also multiplied by the differential of x. And so now we can introduce the integral to each side of our equation. And this tells us the indefinite integral of y squared is going to be equal to the indefinite integral of x squared. So now let's actually find our antiderivatives for y squared. It's going to be 1 3rd y cubed. And then we could add some constant of integration c to this. But we're also going to end up adding some constant of integration, some other c value to the other side. And we're just going to eventually combine these constants together anyways. So we really only need to write one constant of integration when we're using this process. And in general, it'll always be on the side with x. So now what's the antiderivative of x squared? Well, it's pretty much the same, 1 3rd x cubed. But now we have to remember to add in some constant c. And so well now we have an implicit solution to our differential equation. For some of these uh, examples where we use separation of variables, this is as far as we will be able to go because it will be impossible to solve for y explicitly in terms of x. But in this example, we actually can solve for y totally or explicitly in terms of x. In order to do that, we need to multiply both sides by 3. That will give us just y cubed is equal to x cubed plus 3 times c. But c is some arbitrary constant. So we could set it equal to 1 3rd of its original value or just really absorb that factor of 3 inside of our c value. So let's maybe call that c1. Then off to the side, we can say, well, c1 is equal to 3 times our original c value. Well, now to finish solving for y, we just take the cube root of each side. And our general solution is going to be the cube root of the quantity x cubed plus c1. So we finished the first part of this example. We have found the general solution to our first order differential equation. Now, to totally finish the example off, we need to solve this initial value problem where we are told that y of 0 is equal to 2. And so now to finish solving our initial value problem, we remember that well, y of 0 has to be equal to 2. So that means our general solution will be equal to 2 when x is equal to 0. But that simplifies to tell us that 2 is equal to the cube root of this unknown constant. So if we cube both sides of our equation, we find that c1 is equal to 2 cubed, or 8. And so now we have found the particular solution to our initial value problem. I think this will fit on the screen here. The particular solution to that initial value problem part of this example is only the function y equals the cube root of x cubed plus the constant 8. All right, so we have another example where we were asked to solve this differential equation. So we we're asked to solve dy over dx is equal to x times y over the quantity y squared plus 1. And so we're pretty limited on the methods we have to solve one of these differential equations. We don't just have like y prime or some derivative of y is equal to a function of x. So we can't just integrate here because of the mixture of the variables. So what we're going to have to try instead is to separate our variables here. And remember, we're asked to solve this differential equation. And when we're asked to solve the differential equation, we want to find the most general solution that exists that is really a family of solutions. So we'll have some constants. Uh, like c floating around in our final answer. So the first thing we're going to have to try to do is to separate the variables in our equation. And sometimes we might be able to see how to do this all in one step, but there's nothing wrong with doing this over multiple steps. So for this one, I might first multiply both sides by that denominator on the right-hand side to rewrite the differential equation. 
as the quantity y squared plus 1 times dy over dx is equal to the product of x and y, but this isn't totally separated. So to finish separating it, I should divide both sides by y. So we get y squared plus 1 over y multiplied by dy over dx, or y prime is equal to just x. Now to totally finish separating our equation out, we would just multiply both sides by that differential of x. Now our equation is written in the form where we can use our approach of separation of variables. Right? We have it separated. Everything involving y and a factor of dy is on the left-hand side or one side of our equation, and everything involving x and that factor of the differential of x or dx is on the other side. So now we can integrate both sides of our differential equation. The left-hand side we are integrating with respect to y, and the right-hand side we are integrating with respect to x. And so we probably can't recognize the antiderivative of the left-hand side right away, the way it is written. So we're going to need to actually rewrite that expression before we can identify its antiderivative. And here we just want to simplify this fraction, actually doing some division. So we can actually break this up as y squared over y plus 1 over y. And that's still going to be equal to the antiderivative of x. And so now... This allows us to simplify it as y plus 1 over y dy is equal to the antiderivative of x. And so we have separated our equation and then rewritten our integrals in such a way that we can actually evaluate them. So now let's go ahead and find the corresponding antiderivatives. The antiderivative of y is 1 half times y squared. The antiderivative of 1 over y is the natural log of the absolute value of y. And that's all equal to the antiderivative of x, which is 1 half x squared plus some constant of integration plus c. So after integrating both sides of our differential equation, we end up with this equation that relates x and y together in an implicit way. Right? We don't have y written as a function of just x. In our previous example, we were then able to do some algebra and solve for y explicitly in terms of x. But for this problem, this function, we will not be able to do that because that y is trapped inside the natural log. So we have to leave our general solution as an implicit solution. That's the best we can do. So we will want you to actually try to find an explicit solution if it is possible to do so but sometimes it is not possible to do so, and we have to leave it in this implicit form. And this implicit solution can be just about as useful as the explicit solution is when it comes to an application or a context, if we had one.